what's up? We're back. Another episode of Jeepers Creepers Tarantula. We got my niece, Cat from Cool Critters with, Critters with Crat. Bleah. And my cat. Yeah. What's up? We're back. Another episode of Jeepers Creepers Tarantulas. We're here with my cool niece, Catalina from Cool Kidder. Hey, what's up? We're back. Another episode of Jeepers Creepers Tarantulas. We're here with my cool niece, Catalina, from Cool Critters with Cat. That only took five takes. <laughs> but, uh, she wanted to do... <laughs> Let's try this again. All right, we're back. Another episode of Jeepers Creepers Tarantulas. We're here with my cool niece, Catalina, from Cool Critters with Cat on YouTube. Make sure you follow her, like, and subscribe. You know, she wanted to do a collaboration. She wanted to come over and do a video of the stuff that I got from the expo today. We're going to take some time. We're going to look at that. Um, we're going to go over that, and we're going to put them in their uh, enclosures. You know, uh, today I went to the expo out in White Plains, New York. Uh, it was like a three-hour drive. So we checked that out today. You know, it's cool for, I guess, somebody that's never been there. But if you go to the expos out in Pennsylvania... You can pretty much do whatever you want. You're allowed to have whatever you want there. There's no really real restrictions in the state of Pennsylvania of what you can and can't have at the expos. So White Plains had a lot of restrictions. You weren't allowed to have venomous. You weren't allowed to have alligators, crocodiles. You couldn't have any of that. So it was basically just basic stuff. So I thought that was a little bit of a downfall, but that's New York. That's their regulations. So it is what it is. But while I was out there, I got to meet one of my subscribers, Ali. He's cool as hell. His girlfriend, Brittany. Um, got to meet them, hang out. And chatted up a little bit, and they actually wound up buying me a uh, Hapalopus Columbia sling, so that was awesome. I appreciate that. And uh, he's got a YouTube channel, it's Ali's Tarantulas, so definitely check that out. I'll put the link down below, and I'll put Catalina's link down there. But uh, all right, so let's get started with this uh, vinegar rune. Got this little vinegar rune right here, we're going to put in this enclosure. It's a small little vinegar rune. So we're just going to put it in this enclosure for now. I got to get some cork bark. I ordered it from Amazon. So when that gets here, I'll put that in there. But these little things, if you don't have any, they're they're pretty cool. You know, they're completely harmless. Even if it looks creepy. It's yeah, they look creepy. People get freaked out by them. I do. But they are completely harmless. You know, they're vinegar rooms. They're, they get their name because when they get intimidated or their prey try to attack them, they actually spray... You know, uh, it's an acid base that actually smells like vinegar. Um, my other vinegar rune actually sprayed one time when it got scared, and it really legit smells like vinegar. So, but these things are awesome. I have another one that's pregnant, so she's in a bigger enclosure, and she's non-stop digging. Um, I read that it takes about eight months, just almost as long as it does to have a human baby with these. So, let's see what happens with that. A couple people said that she wasn't pregnant, that she was just being overfed, but uh, I talked to somebody that actually keeps these, has gone through, had babies with them, and, you know, knows a lot about them, and showed them pictures and everything, told her, or told them her behavior, and they said she's definitely gravid, so we'll see what happens with that, but that'll be pretty cool to have in a groom babies. He said they usually have about 25 to 30 uh, per sack, so we'll see what happens with that. But let's put this one in the enclosure. Like I said, if you don't have one of these, I suggest that you pick up one or two. That'll be my third one. I like them. They're cool. And they like to eat. But completely harmless. Hey, you want to put that on the shelf? Mm -hmm. Put that over there. And then the next thing we got, we have a uh, Scolopendra polymorpha. I picked this up. This thing so far is a vicious eater. All my other centipedes, I never see them. My mint leg, I got the mint leg over there. I saw her the other day, dropped some food in there. She wanted nothing to do with it. Um, my other one, my Vietnamese giant, never see that. Um, so, like every now and then I'll drop food in that one and it disappears. But my mint leg, she wants nothing to do with it. I got super worms in there so long that they've literally turned to beetles and they're, they're literally still living in there. So... Don't know what the deal is with her, but she was out moving around all around the enclosure the other day. So that was pretty cool to actually see her. Sometimes she will 
dig and make her tunnel along the glass so I can just, you know, see little bits of her feet. So that's pretty cool. I know she's alive and everything. But um, right now, I got this enclosure for this. Um, not really sure the setup. I couldn't really find too much information on the substrate and everything. So I just went with some cocoa fiber, um, some moss, and a hide. And I ordered some leaf litter. I just went to the pet store, the local pet store. They don't have any leaf litter. Um, they usually have it in bags and stuff. I think it's, I can't remember it's Zoomed or who makes it, but they didn't have any. So I just ordered some on Amazon. Amazon is my go-to for everything anyway. But Amazon Prime, you get it in two days. So we are going to put this centipede in here um, for now. And then if someone can tell me more information about this one, and tell me if this enclosure is all right or if it needs deeper substrate. I know all my other ones have much deeper substrate. So, but this one's, it's not big. It's just, you know, maybe three, four inches. So it's not, maybe five inches. But um, it's not the biggest, so I figure this will be good for now. But like I said, if somebody can tell me that it needs different substrate, if it needs sand or something, but I can't get a straight answer out of every anybody. So, if you could let me know about that but we're gonna put him in this cage and I know a lot of people like to handle centipedes but I'm not one of them my luck I just have bad luck so we're gonna put this container down inside its new house and take the lid off and we'll scoot it out that way this this way so that way you guys can get a better look I'm still trying to figure out how to work this GoPro so I can have that camera you know over here on this enclosure since this is like my mascot enclosure and then have it facing down I, like I said I bought a MacBook and everything so that way I can actually edit better and all that stuff so once I figure out how to do that then I will be able to make close-ups and do all that stuff but until then you know we're stuck with this at the moment grab the tweezers over there yeah. right there in the middle shelf on the top in between them two tanks All right, and then we'll just scoot him out right there. He's not the happiest. Nah, the centipede's never are. There you go. Ew. And there he is. He's right under the log, so he's in there. All right, put that over there. And we're going to put this Hapalopus sling, sling. It's a tiny, tiny sling, so we're going to put that back here with all the baby slings in the nursery we're gonna take this we're gonna put this over to the side all right and like I was saying the expo in White Plains today I didn't I didn't grab any tarantulas um, but I drove all the way out there and I didn't want to not grab anything. So the guy had these, the set of Savannah monitors. And you know, they weren't, they weren't too expensive, but he had them in this tiny, tiny, tiny thing, both of them squished together. And I've wanted a Savannah monitor for a while. You know, a lot of people have them, they're pretty cool, but I didn't know much about them. So I hit up Trey Beck from Trey Beck Reptile Junkie you know, awesome guy, always down to earth, always willing to help anybody. So I, I hit him up, asked him, you know, for some information because I didn't know how to keep them, didn't know this, didn't know, didn't really know anything about them besides, you know, their Savannah monitors. So I hit him up and, you know, talked to him for a while and he gave me, you know, a bunch of information of what I needed to do, how to feed them, when I should feed them, what I should feed them, the type of enclosure, the hide, the substrate, and all that stuff. So I went. And well, me and Catalina both, we went and we went to the pet store. We picked up a tank, wound up getting a 55 gallon. You know, Trey said that's good enough and they can grow into that. They wound up having, by accident, they had a, a dollar per gallon on their tank sale. Like, I think he said it was last month that ended. But they messed up and left the tag on there. So when I rung it up, 
it they had to they had to do their they had to give me the sale price because somebody left it on there basically so I got lucky with that and uh, we're gonna take a second I'm gonna we're gonna put these guys in their tanks so and give me a second think, and we think it's a boy and a girl not sure I have no idea how to sex them so figure that out later all right like I was saying I talked to Trey and uh, this is the setup I decided to go with these are the savannas they are extremely docile you know real calm and you know, they're a decent size they get pretty big so this is their setup it is a 60 20 20 mix it's a uh, 60 percent topsoil and it's 20% uh, sphagnum moss and 20% play sand, you know, and then uh, you come over here, you can see this is a hide. I put stone over there and then hit it so that way, and it's packed with sphagnum moss so that way they can go in and have a humid hide. They can do whatever they want. If you look at the substrate, it's a decent depth. Then they got their decent water bowl. It says they need to have a water bowl that they can get in, but uh, Trey also told me that they don't like to have anything that they can have to climb over top of to get to. So I am going to, you know, leave this for their enclosure for a little while. And hopefully this gets them through. And this is our other guy. This one's a little bit bigger. But still, same thing. Docile, nice and calm. And, you know, they're really cool. I'm glad that I decided to pick these up. So. Oh, boy. Their tongues are awesome. But uh, this is our other guy. Let's see. Got some goldfish in their bowl. I don't know if they will eat it or not. But um, that's them. So, pretty cool guys. I'm really glad I decided to get them. And can't wait to see you know them grow. And if they get too big, just like the iguanas, you know, I will build them a custom enclosure. I will also build them a custom enclosure outside, so that way, in the warm months, they can go outside and, you know, get all the natural UV lights and just extra air, everything. I love being able to take the bigger animals outside and uh, do that. All right, so now we're going to move on right, to the and next that one. was the Savannah Monitors in their house. Um, also, I talked to a lady a couple weeks ago. Um, her daughter had a red iguana that she couldn't take anymore, so she gave it to mom. Mom thought it was a bearded dragon, found out it's an iguana and how big they get. Mom couldn't take care of it, um, so she made a post, and then I reached out to her, and while I was out in White Plains, she lived like 30 minutes from White Plains, all the way up in North Jersey, so I wound up meeting up with her and uh, went and got this little red iguana. So, she gave me the cage and everything with it, which was cool. It's a chameleon cage. It's not the right cage by any means, but um, he seems pretty cool. I have green iguanas. I, this will be my first red, but um, he's cool. He's healthy. Um, there's nothing wrong with him at all. He's a perfect specimen, but um, we're going to get him a different enclosure this week. Because this, this doesn't hold any heat, no, it doesn't hold humidity, so we'll get him in a different enclosure, we'll make a different video for that, but um, just wanted to show you one of the other pickups that we picked up today. And that's going to wrap it up, we're just going to take, I got some uh, crickets and stuff to feed the geckos, so, or the chameleons, not the geckos. So uh, we're going to feed the chameleons real quick, and that'll wrap it up. Like I said, we're going to feed the chameleons. Just got some crickets dusted in some calcium. We'll dump them in there.
She must not be hungry because she usually jumps right on top of him. He usually doesn't turn down anything whenever I put it in there. Alright, well that's going to wrap it up for today. Make sure you check out Ali's Tarantulas, Trey Beck Reptile Junkie, and Cool Critters with Cat. See ya.